Yo, what up? How's it going? And welcome back for another video. Today's video, we are doing Griffin versus SKT, the summer finals in LCK. So, I mean, it, there's been a long time since this game has come gone by, but I have not actually watched any of it. And what's, what's you know funny enough about that is the Korean League of Legends is what I watch mostly. Um, if I had to pick a league that I watch the most, it's LCK. Um, I watch LCK the most and then I watch NA and EU about, you know, I split it as much as I can. I mean, there's only so much time in a week that you can watch League of Legends, right? But the week I pay attention to the most is LCK, but I didn't actually watch the final. Uh, I just wasn't going to be able to be awake during the final. Um, whenever it was on, it was on at 3 a.m., which I could normally is, but uh, I wasn't able to be awake and I knew 100% SKT was going to win this. But this is a blind... This is really, truly blind. The only thing I know about this series is that SKT wins in four games. I've stayed so far away from this so that I could VOD review it blind <clears throat> is what I really wanted to do. So I don't know any of the picks. I don't know anything like this. And so much time has passed that even my prediction on picks um, might be incorrect. I watched every single SKT game in the tournament leading up to this. Uh, but, you know, I watched it a month ago. I watched it live. So I... I I don't know anything in this game, so it's truly a blind, a blind VOD review. So I'm really excited. I haven't done, I've never done like a truly blind VOD review other than just knowing the game score. I don't even know which game Griffin wins. So let's just get right into the draft. Okay, we're in the draft now. We're just going to watch at real time speed during the draft with the audio off. Um, and then we are going to watch the game at times two speed, um, which is a easier for me to commentate over and uh, so we can see actually what's going on in the game. So let's just do it. All right. Okay. Yumi ban on blue side is pretty interesting because normally you leave it up so you can pick it. Uh, but that's just showing that uh, SKT, you know, don't ha don't prioritize the pick very, very highly. Um, and I don't know what, honestly, Yumi priority is in Korea at that time. I know Karma priority is pretty high because you pick it as a nullifying champion in LCK. You pick it to nullify the enemy team. And that was a pick that was important in the previous series. Okay. Uh, Olaf ban. Olaf's really popular in Korea right now, despite its win rate. Ferris ban makes sense. Big thing about SKT right now leading up to this series is their mid jungle has been insane. I mean, Clid has just been insane. And the way they play around getting priority mid and then actually making map plays with Clid is, is pretty insane. Okay, nothing weird except for the Yumi blue side ban, so that just frees you up to pick the Akali. Um, I feel like Griffin has to ban um, Akali on red side, but it seems like they're just okay with SKT having Akali, which is interesting. So it makes sense that they that they ban Yumi on blue side if you know they're going to give you Akali, and, um, and maybe in Korea just priority on Yumi isn't super high right now, so they just get the Akali first pick, which is probably on this patch, on 916 and 915 and probably the best first pick but the thing is is Gr griffin like g2 are willing to take the other side of the match if it takes silas so that is most likely going to be a silas mid um and then we have tom kench uh so maybe going to have a tom kench ezreal so it would be interesting if um skt would want to take the ezreal here because if you get tom kench ezreal you have a silas and then you get another and then you get counter pick um, and then you take counter pick for, uh, for top lane and you can have a really good one, three, one setup. All right. We immediately take Renekton and Elise, which is one of the best one, two combos in the game. Um, but, um, Griffin do have ability to counter pick. So it'd be really interesting. Um, it's, it's very interesting taking Renekton with the combo of Elise that early in the draft. Uh, Renekton usually take early in the draft as a weak side top laner, but it seems like they're going to be playing strong side, at least in the early game. Since you picked Huey, so you'd imagine pathing from red buff up to top lane and diving um, at level four is what uh, what this suggests with this draft so far. Then we have Sejuani walked in, so I would expect SKT to ban to ban Ezreal, but maybe maybe they won't. Um, maybe they're not afraid of the one three one option, um, but uh, I'm conditioned to be afraid of one three ones. Uh, I just did the TSM versus CG series, and I'm very conditioned on that. Uh, the Pike ban comes out, and that's 
you know, that's a lane counter to the Tom Kinch, so that makes a lot of sense there. All right. Let's see what else is coming through. Okay, Jace Man, just, uh, just for top lane counter pick. Because you know they're going to counter pick, but Renekton is one of the hardest champions in the game to counter. The known count, like the main counters to Renekton, are not champions you really want to play that often. Um, so, unless, you know, Griffin's willing to play Quinn, uh, Quinn top, or, you know, Vayne top, that type of stuff. But other than that, the melee matchups, none of them are really that bad for Renekton that you can play in the meta right now. That's why Renekton's so safe to take in the first phase. <clears throat> Braum is banned out. Um, so they ban out Braum right there, kind of blind. Braum can actually throw hands with Tom Kinch a little bit. Is one of the only melee supports that can throw hands with Tom Kinch. As well as if you're going to be picking a Kali and Renekton, um, if you're going to be picking a Kali and Renekton, and you know Whis is going to play topside early, then it would make sense to have a defensive bottom lane. And we do have the Zai coming out. So Zai can do uh, similar things to the Ezreal if you're actually wanting to run a 1-3-1. Zai can insta one-shot the wave mid lane and then you can just take your bottom lane uh, around the map the Kog'Maw hover is interesting there's not a lot of threat onto the Kog'Maw if they actually lock this in other than the Silas potentially getting a one shot but the Ezreal is more likely going to be the pick here so gonna have a safe bottom side um, that can actually punish in lane uh, Teddy is very sick on Ezreal, so um, they can they have the ability to play aggressive uh, or just play play a little bit more passive in lane if they want to. So Ezreal gives you the freedom to play weak side if you want to or play strong side. If the Rakan gets locked in here, it's not for lane. It's mainly going to be um, mainly going to be for uh, making sure they have a good form of engage. So Rakan here makes a lot of sense. It gives you that guaranteed form of engage. And then we have the Mordekaiser. So that's pretty interesting seeing the Mordekaiser get locked in. Uh, Mordekaiser can have a decent matchup into the Renekton. I will say if you're Renekton and you're not put behind, you get the Spear of Sojin. Um, you can't, there are some winnable trades for you in the top lane, but can be a favorable matchup for the Mordekaiser for sure. If you pick out the Mordekaiser, you know, in team fights, even if you get behind, you just ult the, ult the priority target and then you, uh, you're good to go. Okay, let's talk about uh, win conditions for each of these teams. Um, let's talk about that real quick. Okay, so SK team, the airway game, their game plan is pretty telegraphed, right? You have the Elise and you have the Renekton, so um, could possibly look for a dive. The early landing fish for Mordekaiser versus Renekton isn't like um, Renekton can have control of the wave with his Q and his slice and dice, so there is definitely dive potential. And um, Mordekaiser can't do the thing where he, you know, only gets the one v one you. So there is some some dive potential if they actually do want to go through with the dive with the Elise. And they are on uh, blue side, so it is easier for the, the Elise to actually get in to actually perform the dive. So that's a pretty telegraph plan in the early game. You also have good doing potential in the 2v2 with uh, with mid, with Akali and Elise. You know, it really depends on what time it is in the game and how the players actually play it. Uh, you know, Sejuani and, uh, Sejuani and the Silas can definitely fight back in that 2v2. It would be really interesting how um, Quid and Tarzan actually move around the map. It's going to, have, you know, jungle is such a OP role um, that so much, so much of the arrow game depends on that. Because you don't imagine Faker or Chovy just getting solo killed in the game. Could happen, uh, but it's really going to come down to the top side. It's going to be very important what Elise does, and important how Tarzan maneuvers around the map because there's a way to stop the Elise from diving you top. So. You're really interesting the decisions that are made in the early game. Could play some mind games where you don't actually even look for the dive and you make a different play cross map because Mordekaiser and Sejuani in the early game is not going to have any threat on the Renekton. So you could just take that, you could just totally take that Elise mid and trick them up. So there's a lot of mind games that can be played here with the jungle position. So it'll be really interesting where the early wards go out and how that stuff type, how that stuff kind of happens. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the Akali matchup, I'm just going to talk about this real quick. The Akali Silas matchup. Generally, Akali is favored in the early winning phase, so level 1s through 5. At level 6, when both of them have the access to the Akali ultimate, Silas is generally better at utilizing Akali's ultimate, so the, the only reason is if Akali goes in, um, and she goes in for the burst combo first, and you know she goes for ult E, does a lot of damage to you, as soon as she comes in, you just pop the King Slayer, and you can do your, sec your rotation of the Akali ult, and it's just a little bit more effective on uh, Silas because of his comeback mechanic from having low health. 
So usually matchup is favored level one through five on Akali. Level six is usually favored for Silas. And then around level nine or so, whenever Akali gets her Gunblade and she has access to, you know, level nine Q, uh, where, you, where you can one shot uh, backline minions, uh, then then this matchup does become Akali favorite again. She can match you in the wave queer and has a lot of kill threat in the 1v1. And um, and if Akali gets around on the map, then it's it's super powerful. The other thing noted is that the Elise is locked in uh, after the Silas, so it does make an ult target that Silas doesn't want to have. The only ult targets that Silas really wants in this game is Renekton and Akali, and then you can take the Ezra one if you want to just snipe people out. You can take the Rakan one, but it's it's not super good. Um, it can be like niche, very, very good. Um, anyways, cool. So uh, the bottom side really depends on how Ezreal is playing. Uh, you can get priority in this lane if you want to. Um, if you're doing well on chunking out the Tom Kinch, hitting your Qs pretty well, you can do this. But you can also just play this play this side super defensively. You have a lot of gank set up onto the Tom Kinch uh, with the Rakan. You can jump onto the Tom Kinch if your Elise comes by. So there's a lot of lanes that uh, SKT can play around. SKT have a decent 1-3-1 setup as they have the Ezreal who can get infinite mid priority um, in the mid game. You have the Akali and the Renekton who can play the side lane. So you do have a 1-3-1 setup. And you have a lot of champions that spike on one item, like the Renekton, like the Akali, like uh, Ezreal, really two items, but his items are very cheap and get some fast. So you have a lot of champions, so look for an explosive mid-game fight by SKT. They don't have, you know, the most amazing scaling in the world, um, but SKT is so good at snowballing their comps, so they can they can actually, if they get ahead in their solos, they can run a great 1-3-1, one one, and that's, you know, 1-3-1 one one scales into the late game. You can have a great 1-3-1. One get your structures, get get the get the neutral and close out the game. So um, the win condition for SKT's comp, maybe get ahead in your solos. If Teddy's just popping off, you can do there. So they have so many lanes they can pop around. You can get a 1-3-1 setup in mid game, look for an explosive mid game fight around neutrals, win the neutral fight and snowball from there. Um, if they don't get ahead or get a neutral state into the mid game, um, then it can get a little scary for SKT in terms of if the game goes a little bit later. Um, but with this comp, you can look for picks pretty easily in the jungle, especially if you're ahead or playing around vision. You have the Renekton who can essentially one-shot anybody uh, once he has Sojin, you just ult and then flash W, and Khan's great playing around that. And they have the Elise um, and Ezra who can hit you out of fog, and Akali who can hit you out of fog, or Khan. So just kind of like really bursty type of fights. So, um, And their, their, their team fight wants to dive right into you. So, um, Cool. Looking over at Griffin's composition... Um, they also have somewhat of a one through one setup uh, that you can that you can figure out with the Mordekaiser and the Silas. They do have um, better scaling into the later game uh, than SKT. So they do have better scaling into the late game with SKT um, if they can go to an even game state and look for um, <clears throat> look for you know a fight on their terms or a, f or a neutral fight like in a lane something like that or you know around a neutral objective uh, that isn't isn't super bad for them. SKT can really get you out of fog, but if you're just a straight standard team fight, there are a lot of options in um, SKT's comp. I mean, the Mordekaiser can just pick whoever's fed on their team, isolate them out in the fights, and Zaya, Zaya has a lot of ways to deal with uh, getting Dove on too, because they have the Elise, they have the Renekton, they have the Akali. Well, you know, Zaya has ultimate and she has a Tom Kench, so there's a lot of tools to be able to deal with. Um, SKT's comp in, you know, a standard 5v5 composition. So in a standard 5v5, uh, you'd probably want to favor Griffin's team comp, but that's only if they just don't fall behind in the early game. They get to that, if they get to, you know, you know mid-late team fight, uh, then you'd, you'd really like Griffin's team comp. But SKT really punishes people in the early game, especially in this tournament. So um, as long as you can mitigate some of the stuff that happens in the early game, you get to a mid-late fight, you can have a really great team fight, you can match in the one through one If your solo winners are, you know, even with the enemy solo winners, you can actually match. Um, so there's some options there. So both teams have pretty reasonable team composition. Griffin has a lot of tools to stop what SKT wants to do in the mid-late. But uh, really, the early game is definitely on the onus of SKT. You do have Sejuani with two melees. He synergized well with it. Sejuani with Mordekaiser is nothing like Sejuani with Renekton. Um, so it doesn't have a whole lot of gank set up. So they really just want to get to that mid to late and get some good team fights. Or maybe get some, you know, with some good pathing, get some get some leads in the early game. So, all right, cool. That's all the win conditions. Um, if I had to pick a team comp that I favor for this series, I would pick SKT's comp uh, for SKT in this specific series. They're looking to punish in the early game against Griffin, who's, you know, historical chokers. 
Um, so I would I would put it on SKT to make it and make them kind of sweat in the early game. Um, so I do like SKT's comp in this specific game. If I was just looking at two general teams, you know, Griffin has a great comp too. So Griffin has a great comp, definitely winnable for both teams right here. All right, let's get right into it. Get right into the game. Ah, uh, this is fun. I don't know why I was stressing out about doing this all day. All right. Oh yeah, they do the little intro video. I forgot. Oh, was there a level one play? All right, let's see. Um, Griffin dropped a ward on their own defensive side. Let's see where everybody's starting. Okay, so Sejuani's starting bottom side, and the th oh they oh Faker's playing Renekton. Wow, I'm an idiot. Oh, this is a really good matchup for Renekton. Um, this is a really good matchup for Renekton, and this matchup is fine for Akali. Um, you have a lot of abilities to dodge. You just have to dodge the Qs as a Kali. Um, and you kind of like pseudo outrange. Wow, they lane swapped. Okay. Interesting. They lane swap. They lane swap mostly because Mordekaiser is difficult to dive. Hmm. That's interesting. Wow, that adds a whole new layer to what I was saying. <laughs> Still, the wind conditions are the same. Um, and Elise has so many options around the map. Okay. Um, so we did... Um, so Johnny's just doing a full core towards top side. And Elise is doing full queer skipping raptors and doing... Um, Doing the scuttle crab, they're just going to trade sides of the map right now. This suggests that maybe Elise is going to look for this level three play bottom, or she's looking for a level four play top, um, or maybe a play mid. So there's so much stuff to do. They can make a level three play bottom right now, um, and then take scuttle crab or get take scuttle crab to make a level three play. But SKT's bottom lane is playing aggressive right now, so and they know, you know. It's so hard to actually make a play on Griffin right now. Because you know your jungler's on the top side, then you'd have to know that the enemy jungler is going to be on bottom side and based off of how SKT is playing. You will not be able to make a play. They're both just going to push for vision. Probably recall right now and then set up. But Quid is going to look for a play mid. He actually walks over vision. Sweeps out the vision. Going to query Raptors. You'd imagine a recall would come after that and then his top camps are going to be spawning. And maybe look for... a Play top. Doran is getting his ward out. He's acting like he's warding. That was just a little fake ward there. All right. Now Tarzan's going to be moving that bottom side, you would imagine. That's where his camps are going to spawn. I would be surprised if Tarzan makes a, an aggressive play. Really, in this early game, you would imagine Tarzan is just going to be playing, uh, you know, shadowing duty. Trying to farm up. Uh, and Shadow, Shadow Elise try to, you know, keep Elise from killing his laners and then get level 6 and then they make a big play with that. So Elise is coming to the same side. She actually just cleared um, the vision out. So Quid, Quid cleared this vision out. Base came straight back. And then, so he doesn't lose a whole lot. He doesn't lose a little bit of tempo if this play doesn't work out. But if you go through his play and it works out, then he can just go top side, clear down. Really interesting what happens here. So the first dragon is infernal, so it does incentivize getting your mid lane stronger. Quid's gonna wait around for a really long time. They have such easy gank setup with Renekton. That's why the Elise Renekton is so so free. You flash into Renekton, you get a you get a free stun, um, and then you combo it with uh Yeah, so Quid's doing the same thing. He's clearing vision. He's going to take his jungles. Maybe go for a full query towards bottom side. Reset. Maybe could look for a gank top. Um, or he can just start setting up around Infernal if uh, Renekton has enough prio. So I'm talking a lot about what Quid's doing right now. is because Quid's, Quid's really the only person on the map who, is, who has the ability to do anything right now. Um, if that makes sense. Bot lane is mostly a neutralized lane. Top lane is mostly a neutralized lane. Unless Khan plays it incorrectly. Um, mid lane is a Renekton favored matchup, but uh, Faker's just playing around jungle pressure. 
and you know Sejuani Sejuani so it really really just comes down to what Elise wants to do right now okay Faker should have plenty of gold to spend he has TP so we can get back on the map he got himself a long sword and a no magic mantle and now now you'd have to imagine we're going to be looking for some pressure or some some type of river control right now is what we what you can imagine we'll be looking for it's not super important for quid to come top he did clear out that ward top side but going top side right now is uh is a little bit dangerous if you're going to be trading sides of the map because of this infernal you could play some mind games where you just give up the infernal to get you know pressure in your solos or your one three one that you can possibly run later, but it does look like we're going to be fighting over river control. <clears throat> nice. And then Sejuani's going to move in because bot lane is in a neutral state. Mid lane is in a neutral state, so he's able to able to do this. All right. Iwis did just go back, so they might cheat over to the dragon and see what they can do. It's really hard for Griffin's bottom lane to just straight up walk into the dragon because of uh, how far up Teddy is. But um, seems like we don't have enough priority, so we're just going to reset and look for something else. You do have to imagine, though, a lot of play is going to be made around this bot river. Or mid, mid and bot. Top lane is just going to be on an island. All right, okay, just looking for a little bit of a play there, just a little bit of a trade. Mm. Timings are not good for SKT right now. Uh, it's hard for Teddy to get a good back, and he's out of mana and doesn't have TP. So they do need to make a play around mid if they're going to have a chance of getting this dragon. So if that play doesn't work out, <clears throat> then Elise is going to have to waste a lot of her tempo and just hang out on this side of the map. Um, and just hang out on this side of the map uh, because Teddy has to recall, right? So Teddy needs a recall pretty soon. But since they get that kill mid, they're able to actually rotate over, and then uh, Griffin's bot lane decides to reset at that time. That's telling me that they're just going to give this Drake. I mean, it's hard for them to fight over it, but that's just telling me that they're going to give this Drake. Um, yeah, they're, they're just going to give this Drake. If they're going to actually try to make a play for it, then they are definitely not in position to do that. So since their mid laner died, um, they just decided, all right, let's go ahead and just get a good recall and uh, we'll reset and try to figure out something else. So game's going as planned for SKT right now. Um, I mean, Griffin's playing their draft how it's supposed to be played. So is SKT. Um, it's on the onus for SKT to make plays in the early game. But, uh, you know, the person that the uh, the person that the uh, decisions are put into is Quid, and Quid's been the best player on SKT basically this whole year. So um, the responsibility is in the right place. Boom! That's just free. That is free. That's pretty cool that they did the lane swap. Did you do the lane swap to get um, a good matchup, and also uh, it just worked out that um, you. You're getting a lot of dragon control off of that, and the first dragon was Infernal Dragon. So, next one's going to be Ocean. You know, 14 minute Ocean isn't like crazy valuable, but you know, it's nice to have. <clears throat> be interesting if anybody does any types of lane swaps for this uh, Rift Herald, or if they're just going to use uh, mids pressure to push into it. Because you can basically do the same thing you've been doing bottom side since you got mid ahead. You can just rotate mid to. Um, to the objective that you want. So they don't even have to do a lane swap. You already have a neutral matchup, neutral to a positive matchup top lane. Um, so that uh, if you get mid ahead, you can just choose which side, side of the map you go to, uh, mostly neutral matchups on both side lanes. So they know SKT is making a play top side, so Tarzan's gonna look for this play bottom. Doesn't get anything off. It is very difficult to dive Ezreal uh, Rakan. They might actually get these plates. Let's see. Alright, man. The early game is going great for SKT. Everything is going 
the plan. They get some big plates on con, and where you want the gold in this comp is on your is on your solo laners. Ooh, that was close. So Zaya does get some gold, so that's where you want the gold on Griffin's comp. So okay trade for Griffin, but not what you want because you lose your top winner, your top winner loses all that farm, and you lose your top tower. Um, so now you have the structure down for the important objective, and now they're going to have to be able, Griffin will need to be able to get you know, these two structures eventually to uh, to get river control on top side. Because the next Drake is Ocean Drake, which isn't a super valuable Drake. Um, so then the next objective after that um, is going to be Baron or the next Drake. So SKT can choose to just not get this Drake since they're in control of the game. Um, <clears throat> and then and then actually take it at 25 minutes rather than uh, take it when it spawns. You could choose to do that um, so that you make the next neutral to fight over this Baron and you have... You should have full river access. You can do that, but probably would just take the ocean drake and force the next spawn, and then make him make that decision on the spawn after that. All right, and now we'll go to our one three one lane assignments. Uh, Ezreal, you don't need gold on the early game because you're just going to stick a mid, and after he's on a full two items, he's like the best mid prio champion in the game. You just stick a mid, put your side laners in the side lane, and you have a good time. All right, so SKT should have this set up, and they have big advantages. They have advantages in their solo laners. So right now, Griffin don't have an advantage anywhere. The only advantage they have is a team fight in ten minutes. You know, so SKT is just gonna rack up the advantages right now. And there's really not a lot Griffin can do about it. Really tough to give 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 over the early game to SKT. Is very tough. That's why I said I favor their draft, um, even though. Griffin has somewhat of a solid draft, right? I mean, this is a solid team fight draft, right? Can match in the one three one to a certain degree, but you're giving all the early game tools to SKT, and they've already shown that they're so good at utilizing it. All right, looking for a big play around mid. Okay, okay, nothing happens. So this is when this is. I mean, this is when SKT's comp is much stronger than Griffin. So it's fine looking for that type of play. You get that fight, you get that mid structure, and they really want this mid structure. Once you get this mid structure, you can completely control river access. You can get that mid structure, and then you can force bottom structure, and they will never have. I mean, it's just a ton of gold, and they'll never have any river access. Next dragon is infernal, um, and so if you force spawn the infernal, like we said before, SKT's comp is still stronger at that time. So as long as they can get in and do some vision denial, that should be a free Infernal Drake. The only thing to say is they can't deny river access because they don't have their bottom tower and Griffin has theirs. So um, Griffin can just choose to push in the bottom wave and can get river access that way rather than actually just walking uh, straight in. You can, you can force access that way. So SKT may look to dive around this side to actually push on, on this side so they can break this tower so that they can deny river access. There might be something that we have, they actually plan to do. Yep, here we go. Wow, I'm good at my job. Yeah, it doesn't look doable. So they're just going to back off of that. But that's the play to make right now. Is uh, SKT is going to have a really hard time breaking mid unless they just pick someone out. Um, so the you know you either try to break mid or you try to break bottom. But you have to get a kill in order to do it. So. They're just kind of fishing for plays right now. They really do want to break this bottom structure so you can, so you can actually deny river access. Um, so just slowly chipping it down, but it's not going to be enough before Infernal spawns unless you actually get a kill. All right, Doran's actually back here right now. He's going to lane swap. They're lane swapping because Chovy has TP. So Chubby's going top side because it has TP. And then Khan can actually just walk straight to the Infernal, so he won't have to use his TP. So this is great by Khan. And so right now, they are SKT already has river control. They already have priority over this, so they can actually look for a fight right here. And if they don't get the fight they want, so if they don't find a fight, they're at least going to get Chovy's TP. But they should be able to get a good fight. They do have that one ward that's in there. Oh, and Doran's down. Ugh. 
All right, this is a free dragon. This is the freest dragon I've ever seen. Oh, tragedy strikes on the rift. You give double infernal. Oh, Doran really needed to not die there, but they have no they have no vision in the river except for this one lonely ward right here. And if you saw earlier, Quid went in and denied, uh, took down the pinks right here. That was mainly so they could get a dive. But that was so good the way SKT moved around the map. So Khan got a great back timing, was able to get Pryo on, was able to get a tempo advantage moving into uh, the Drake. They had full river denial except for this one ward, so not completely full river denial. But they were set up to get a fight that they want. And if you don't get a fight that you want, you get Chovy's TP. And, I mean, it's so easy to get a fight that they want. Just based off of how they're set up and the strengths of the team composition right now. SKT's in a great spot. You're just going to keep pushing in these side lanes. Um, eventually, uh, they can at, at some point. They're doing some chip damage to the side lanes. If the side lanes get way too overpowered, then they're going to have to leak from this mid lane to... To you know, accept these side lanes, um, and then you can get the mid structure that way. The other way you can get the mid structure is if you just push up the side lanes, and then you try to make a play on the people defending mid after the side lanes are pushed up. That may be what they want to do. They really want to break this mid structure, and you can get full control over the entrances or the exits from Griffin's jungle. Makes it really easy to get a good fight around Baron. SKT do not have a lot of Baron damage, so that's something since they don't have a mountain. So. They might just get this cloud first, but if you know if you get a wipe around this time, then this is barren. Um, so they really want to push up in mid, break this structure, and then get denial on the exits from this jungle, so they can get a good fight around barren and have some threat. In a couple minutes, they have legitimate threat. They really need Blade of the Rune King on Teddy to have like some some like really like really really good threat on barren. Um, to actually make Griffin have to face check. So it's still going to be a couple of minutes before Griffin has to face check, but if they can, if they can get the structure broken, it's really tough to do. Ugh. All right, but the, on the flip side, you know, uh, Viper's been farming up. He's almost on his three items. Once he gets on his three items, uh, they can look for a good team fight. Um, you know, they can look for a good team fight, but it's going to be so hard to actually face check in the SKT right now. If you actually look for that fight. So it's getting close to where SKT has a legitimate Baron threat. And once they have a legitimate Baron threat, Griffin's going to have to start face checking some stuff. And if they have to face check some stuff, then, um, I mean, their team comp is set up well to face check. But, um, you know, and they can definitely still win a team fight. That's, you know, their, their comp is about to come online. The SKT is in a big advantage right now. I mean, they're in a gold advantage, they have two Infernals. Um, they're on two item Renekton, so he has definitely not fallen off yet. Akali's in a very good spot. So, important thing uh, to notice is that there's two stopwatches right here and a QSS. There's a lot of defensive tools as well. So, SKT bought these items, you know, bought especially these two stopwatches because they're preparing for Griffin to strike back soon because it's getting so close. Teddy's about to have his Blade of the Room King, and once he has that, both teams know that. SKT are going to be playing around this Baron, um, and there's going to be a fight. So both teams know there's going to be a fight soon. So Cloud's coming up, so SKT's probably just going to secure this Cloud um, and then get a reset to get Teddy on that Blade of the Rune King, and then the game really begins. Um, Griffin could choose the fight here. That would be really interesting if Griffin chose the fight here. Viper is on three items, so they might actually choose the fight over this Cloud, and the, the fight isn't really about the Cloud. The fight is really about... We're going to fight you now so we don't have to Baron face check and we don't have to do the Baron dance. We're going to fight you now. They actually got some river control, so this suggests that they might actually look for a fight here. I mean, this is the time where, you know, Griffin's comp can actually fight back. So that's the stage we're at. Okay, he's in the Terror Dome. Faker's in the Terror Dome. Okay, they just traded ults. Sojin OP. They, Griffin thought about taking a fight, but not today. Right. Most likely you would imagine Teddy just goes for a reset here. Oh, he's actually gonna get a tower because Viper is killing the red buff. Nope, he's not able to get it. Oh, they get Tom Kinch flash. It's not the most valuable flashes, it's fine. Teddy's gonna get that and then he's gonna get a reset. Alright, now the game really begins. Okay, because now 
Teddy has a Blade of the Rune King. His Mermana is stacked out. So now teams are going to be fighting for a Vision Line right here. So SKT is when they want to get a Vision Line in the exit of the enemy jungle and then deny River Vision. It will be really interesting if Griffin can get a Sneaky Ward in here somewhere. Um, if not, as soon as SKT is back on the map, they're going to push in and take this Vision Control and force force uh, Griffin to have to face check somewhere. So the options for Griffin is they can look for a fight right here. Um, whenever the vision control access starts to happen. If not, they're going to get denied out. If not, they're going to get denied out, and it's going to look really scary for them. They're going to have to start face checking this stuff. Okay. So they're looking for a fight top with the Tom Kinch. So there we go. Actually making a side lane play with the Tom Kinch. Uh, they do get Faker's Flash. He does have TP. So if there's a fight right here, then Faker can TP in. Okay. They get a chunk out. They might decide to fight here. Akali is still bottom side with... Um, Kali's still bottom side with uh, TP. All right, Effort doesn't have Reconnell, so it'll be really interesting if they actually do look for a fight here. Recon's kind of looking for a one, 1v1. Oh wow, that was really interesting. They finally do get that kill on the Doran. All right, they get the kill on the door end. They have bottom lane pushed all the way in, so you'd have to imagine. Now we're going to push in here and give vision denial. So we do not have pink wards on a, a bunch of the members on SKT. Whew. So they might have to do a base to do this. So Faker's actually just able to do this because Doran's not on the map, and they don't know where the rest of SKT members are, and they're not about to just run face forward into a Renekton who has Dominus. So Faker actually solo gets that when he actually isn't able to. But he's able to do that because of the misinformation, the lack of information. So Khan's just going to go back bottom side. He has TP. Nice. Ugh. I mean, Griffin's comp is online, but they're in such a scary position. Soon they're going to have to start face checking some stuff um, if SKT actually moves in here appropriately. All right, they actually have full river denial. So that's full river denial, and they have vision of their jung jungle access. And they have denial of vision right here, which is the important spot. Next cloud is going to spawn, so it looks like SKT is just going to move over and take the cloud drake. I would really like to see SKT kind of threatening Baron. Nice. So Griffin has decided it's time. As I see here and here, they're able to cheat into the river. So both teams have decided, all right, we're going to play the game now. It's time. And so here's the big fight. There's a big fight. There's the Baron. Or might just push in to get structures. So you can actually just push in, get inhibitor. Maybe you look for an end. They're actually going to look for an end here. Yeah, they're actually looking for an end. Okay. Okay. Wow. And there it goes. Griffin finally gets to play the game, and the game ends. Wow, they were able to actually end there. That was awesome. Okay. Hey there. Hi. That was it for this video. That was game number one. Um, you know, when you watch SKT play, they do exactly what you think they're gonna do, right? You're really just watching Quid. You're watching and learning what Quid's gonna do. You're like, okay, he wants to play around his solos, but how's he gonna do it? Um, and then whenever you, uh, you know, they play so well around their win condition. So there's really not much for me to talk about. Uh, they play such so well around their win conditions. Um, and there it was. So hey, man, that was game number one. We're going to move on, and we're going to do game number two, so you stick around. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.